Well, good morning. Good to see all you here today. Rick, it, yeah, let's turn, turn this way. That's, yeah. it's so, so I don't know if you know this, but we, 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 we do this and then we do the greeting time after that. It's, sometimes people get that out of order. You're not supposed to greet each other before you know, we say it's time to greet each other, for goodness sakes. Man. All right, now you can stand and greet each other. And uh, yeah, there we go. Welcome, welcome.
we are his children. Amen? Amen. As we read through the Bible this year, uh, we are now, if you're tracking with us, in the book of Ezekiel. And uh, I love how uh, in chapter 1, uh, Ezekiel uh, comes face to face with the, with the presence and the power of God. So in verse 26 of chapter 1, we find these words. And above the expanse, over their heads, there was the likeness of a throne, an appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was a likeness with a human appearance. And upward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as it were gleaming metal like the appearance of fire enclosed all around. And downward, what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as it were the appearance of fire. And there was a brightness around him, like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness all around him. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking. And this reminder of God's power, of his majesty, of, of how he reveals himself many times in the, in the Old Testament uh, to, uh, to his people, to his prophets, and and uh, obviously in the new, uh, as he reveals himself to us as Christ Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, as we worship him together. I think it's so important, I think it's so crucial for us to remember these manifestations of God in the Old Testament, high and lifted up on the throne. It's so easy for us as we, as we sing songs week in and week out to maybe to forget, to maybe lose sight of this great God whom we serve and all of his power and all of his might and all of his majesty and all of his wonder. So as we continue to worship him this morning, I think it's so important for us to reflect on these truths. And your altars are open during this next worship time. So it, if you feel so led during this next song, we encourage you, we invite you to come. Join us in prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we, 
we come before you and God, we just, we thank you. We thank you for the great privilege of being able to worship you here in your house this morning. God, we, we don't take that for granted. God, recognizing that, God, that our church family here, God, the encouragement here, the support here, the love here, God, that's uh, it's just an extension of you. So, God, we, we thank you for that. And, God, for those gathered at the altars this morning, for those lifting up requests, God, for those, God, that uh, maybe have been mentioned by name here this morning already, for those that, God, maybe that haven't, God, you know. God, you know the needs. God, for those that need encouragement, for those that need strength, for those, God, recovering from surgeries, for those, God, uh, healing, God, from various sicknesses and, and, and struggles, God, for, for those preparing for surgeries in upcoming days, God, we pray, God, that in ways that only you can, God, that you would uh, just come through and provide healing and encouragement and strength. God, for those mourning, God, the loss of loved ones in recent days, recent months, God, we pray your, your presence and your peace, God, and your great love over, over them and over those individuals and families. God, for those here this morning that, uh, God, are in need of a special touch, for those here this morning, God, that, uh, that are in need of salvation, God, that are maybe, maybe far from you, God, uh, they walk through the doors, they're in the building this morning, but God, they're, they're light years away from uh, being in right relationship with you. God, may today, may today be the day, God, that you step in, and God, as we confess our sins, we know that you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and that you renew us, and that you put your spirit inside of us, and, and you transform us. So God, we pray that today for those that need that, and for all of us. God, may we remember, God, uh, continually the, the great sacrifice that you made for us on the cross to, to, to make, a, make the way for us. And may we live in light of these, these realities and these truths. So thank you, Jesus, for who you are and for what you're doing and what we trust you're going to continue to do and see through to completion. We pray these things this morning in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to clap for that, Margetta. And we've been praying for you, and it's so encouraging to see you here today. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's good to see Gary with you, too. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure when you came in this morning, you got a bulletin. I want to encourage you to take that out now. Go ahead and tear off that back flap. That allows you to mark your attendance here with us this morning. Allows us to partner with you, to connect with you in prayer. Um, we got a whole team of folks that pray over these requests each and every week. Uh, so I want to encourage you to take time to complete this. And you can just leave it in the pew when you exit the sanctuary this morning. Um, or you can deposit it in one of the baskets in the back next to each one of the exit doors. But I want to encourage you to take some time. Uh, to do that and uh, plenty of information about events activities things coming up in the life of the church uh, in the coming days lots of neat things coming up this week this Wednesday night we kick off our children's ministry programming with Awana excited about that excited about what God's going to be doing this coming school year uh, the teen ministry has their kickoff event uh, coming up uh, on Sunday uh, women's Bible study starting a study uh, on Wednesday nights as well and then the men's uh, breakfast uh, is this coming Saturday morning and then we also have our baptism service next Sunday so just a few things going on uh, this next week but uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us for some of those things maybe many of those things um, and even if you can't please be in prayer for what God is doing and uh, what we know he's gonna uh, be be working in through all of those events and things so uh, we wouldn't be able to do all these things that we do as a church without without your faithful and generous support uh, to the ministries of the church through the collection of the tithes and offerings. So this is the time of the service that we normally would pass the plate. We don't do that anymore, but we have boxes set up in the back next to each one of the exit doors. Uh, so whether it's during this next worship song uh, or at the conclusion of the service, we encourage you to deposit your tithes and offerings in those boxes. Uh, we are very grateful as a church uh, for your continued partnership with us as we seek to be the light in this community that God has called us to be. So let me pray now over the tithes and offerings before we go any further this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your presence here with us, and we thank you for calling us and for saving us. And 
for uh, all of the ways that you provide in big ways and unexpected ways. And God, we celebrate. God, Margetta's praise even this morning. God, just your healing touch over her and your protection over her this last week. And God, we, we thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to worship you in, in so many ways. But uh, God, especially through the giving back. God, the, the collection of the tithes and offerings. God, the, the simple but uh, yet powerful reminder. God, that the, all that we have is yours. God, it's, it's but a gift that's on loan to us from you. God, you've called us to be good stewards of, of the gift that you bless us with. And so, God, we pray your blessing over the gift, over the giver this morning. God, that you would empower us as a church. God, to only be good stewards of what you blessed us with as we seek to be uh, the light in this community that you've called us to be. Thank you, Jesus. We pray these things in your name. Amen. <laughs>
question, looking for a message. Facing my fears, I'm hoping for a blessing. Telling my demons they can get the step, and I was lost. No, I was hiding. I was so divided. Chasing after wind, I couldn't hold to find it. Trying to get bigger bags, yeah. Trying to get what they had, yeah. Should have been holding back. Didn't know what I had. So let's celebrate, yeah, let's celebrate, yeah, yeah. We gon' levitate, there'll be better days, yeah, yeah. Let it resonate, throw the stress away. Come on, baby, let's wake up and celebrate. Come on, celebrate, yeah, celebrate, yeah, more, ayy. 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 Uh, we gotta celebrate, cause like the year's over. Mm, we gonna do it, cause my dog a year sober. Mm, I give online, don't judge me when I pass the church plate. All I want is the cake for my birthday. Yeah. Closing our houses and opening businesses. We went to college and finished it. Did a whole lot with a little bit. Yeah. If we take a L, then we elevate. Don't let your food get cold. Looking at somebody else. So cake. let's celebrate. Yeah, let's celebrate. Yeah, yeah. We gon' levitate. There'll be better days. Yeah, yeah. Let it resonate. Throw the stress away. Yeah, yeah. Don't waste another day. Come on, baby. Let's wake up and celebrate. everybody uh, I watch that thing and I still get emotional just because I'm pretty thankful Jenny and I are to have this opportunity to to be with the youth um, and to get these relationships that we've had over the last year that was my trial test I still have a mic and I'm allowed up here so apparently we're gonna do another round of this so um, hopefully we get a few more things right um, I Appreciate all the parents of the youth here that there were things that I just appreciate you guys bearing with us on things and uh, So once again, we do have another year starting up as Pastor Lane was saying next Sunday. We start out with the kickoff um, Be all kinds of fun stuff. You may get wet if you do volunteer. You don't have to get wet. So um, And then like they're saying uh, the Wednesday after next which is the 30th is when we'll start ours from 6 to 7.30. Um, there are a couple things to look forward to um, that are coming up as well. My clicker guy. Please don't. Is it already on? I already did it once. Thank you. I say, everybody claps for everything, clap for me. Anyway, so then we got a movie night that's coming up for uh, on the 3rd. Um, that'll be outside here. And then the really fun thing that we will have more stuff coming up is we're going to do something new this year for our group, our youth, and it's a retreat um, in, uh, I can't remember the name of the lake, it's in Rome City. Um, Sylvan, it's right on. You guys already knew. So anyway, um, I appreciate you guys. Um, and I guess the last thing Pastor Lane kind of helped me segue is we did teach Christ. I, that, that video looks like we all we did was have fun, which we did. But um, most importantly, my goal, and I hope that anybody that knows anybody that has youth, um, please recommend them coming. We're trying to expose Christ um, I guess not from a generational lens. I want them all to see Christ for themselves through scripture, through them thinking it through, through them praying, through them battling their own battles 
in their lives because we all struggle and go through our sins on a daily basis. And 13 through 18 is not excluded. So um, that's going to be our goal for this first time. So if you do have anybody, please. Um, we are going to have a, a type of transportation too. So I want everybody to know if you have somebody that has a kid that cannot make it or they can't get there transportation wise, we got that locked up too. So um, get with me at any time. And uh, like, like I said, I thank you guys so much uh, for this opportunity. So. Appreciate Rake and Jenny and their leadership. Lots of neat things. Lots of neat things going on there. You're all stuck with me again this Sunday. Amen. <laughs> keep praying. Darn it, keep praying for Pastor Lyle. He wants to be up here. We're looking forward to that. So, but this morning, we're stuck with me. So we should pray. We should pray for that. Let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for all the neat things that have happened already this morning. And God, we just pray these next several moments, God, that as you, as you speak to us, uh, God, may these, may these be your words and not my words. Uh, so God, uh, we, we just pray, God, that... Uh, God, that you would move in this place, that you would stir hearts, that you would, uh, God, just do what only, what only you can do. So thank you, Jesus. We invite you, we invite your spirit into this place once again. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. So I've had the great privilege of walking through um, many rough roads with people uh, over the years, uh, and I can honestly say that one of the most difficult and I think one of the most painful uh, of, of challenges that I've, I've seen individuals, I've seen couples, families faced with uh, is, is that of infertility. Uh, we know life is precious and we know that, uh, that life is, is a gift. Um, this is why that uh, you know, abortion is such a unique uh, tragedy in our day because it, it takes something so, so beautiful and so wonderful and it, it literally, uh, literally destroys it. Um, but uh, you know, couples who long for, for children but cannot have uh, children of their own uh, know a particular kind of loneliness and, and grief uh, that is specific to them in their struggle. And it's, it's one that oftentimes is, uh, is suffered uh, most in in silence there was there was a couple scripture tells us uh, who could not have children and uh, and for many years struggled uh, with this hard reality you see the the mother in particular uh, longed to be able to have a child to care for her own uh, this couple tried everything in their power to conceive uh, but to no avail and finally the the, the, the mother could could take it the wife could take it no longer. Uh, so she prayed a very bold prayer that went something like this. God, if you, if you give me a child, I will dedicate it to you. It will be set apart for you and for your service all the days of its life. Give me a child and I will surely give it back to you. Well, God heard this woman's prayer and, and he answered her request. And the, the closing verses of 1 Samuel chapter 1 uh, tell us that Hannah did in fact dedicate her son Samuel to the Lord and to his service. And he was, he was set apart for God. Set apart. Uh, this is a concept that we, that we see popping up again and again uh, throughout the course of Scripture. Of, of people being dedicated to God. Of people being chosen people being called, people being set aside, redeemed, created for a special and unique purpose. And the reality is that as, as followers of Christ, as representatives and ambassadors uh, and citizens of his kingdom, we too, all of us, every single one of us in this place this morning, have been set apart for God and for his purposes for our lives. 
I don't know about you, though, but I, I'm a really selfish person. Uh, and, and so this, this idea, and it's, it's more than an idea, I think it's a, it's a foundational reality of Christianity that, that we, are, we are not our own. We were bought at a price, as Scripture tells us in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 6, verse 20. Uh, and elsewhere, in, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, uh, we're told it's no longer I who live, Paul says, but, but Christ who lives in me. This is, the, this is the wrestle. This is the struggle. This is the essence of, of almost all types of sin, selfishness, going our own way, refusing to submit to the lordship of Christ. This is definitely at odds with this idea of being set apart, of being not our own, of belonging to God. So I don't know how it goes for you, but God and I have these conversations. Uh, you know, Lane, if you, if you really want to follow me, then why do you spend so much of your time doing your own thing? Uh, spending your time the way you want to and not living the way I want you to. Lane, if you say you trust me, then, then why do you worry so much and why do so often you lack peace in your life? Do you not really believe that I am in control of all things? If you truly believe that I've given you everything that you have, time, talent, money, friendships, relationships, opportunities, everything else that God freely gives each and every one of us out of his great bounty, then why do you not live your life as if you were set apart for his service? And that reality that, that we, all of us, as, as followers of Christ have been called to live lives set apart for him. This is what we're going to be discussing in, in greater detail in our time together this morning. So to accomplish this goal, we're going to be hanging out uh, largely in 1 Samuel chapter 3, uh, and we're going to begin with the first verse here in just a moment. Uh, but as you turn there, I want to give you some background and context for what's taking place in this passage this morning. Uh, so the story that I shared a few minutes ago uh, about Samuel's parents can be found in the first chapter of this book. Uh, the second chapter goes on to speak further the historical context of this time. Uh, and uh, the, the time of the judges has, has almost come to a close at this point. Um, this was a rather difficult time for the nation of Israel. Uh, it can be summed up in the closing words of the book of Judges. Uh, chapter 21 verse 25 where scripture tells us in those days Israel had no king everyone did as they saw fit uh, if you've done any reading in the book of Judges you you know that that is surely the case and that the results were often very dire for the people because they chose to live for themselves instead of their true king God himself but in the in the midst of the the sin and even the wickedness of this age uh, God hears the prayer of Hannah. He hears the prayer of a righteous person that's longing for him. And he gives her a son. And Samuel is set apart from the earliest of ages for God. And we too have been set apart for God as well. So we can learn from these verses and for this, from this topic this morning uh, what it means to live life set apart for him. So let's turn now to 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to begin in verse 1. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. That time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. It's kind of like having a sleepover with God. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And, and he ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I, I did not call my son, lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet 
been revealed to him. Which, on a side note, think about that for a minute. Samuel is serving in the temple with Eli, who is, the, who is the, both, a, both a prophet and, and, and serving as, as priest at that time. Um, you'd think maybe Eli would have at some point mentioned, like, oh, hey, by the way, like, what we're doing here is, you know, but, but he didn't. I mean, that speaks to the, um, you know, I think the evil and the depravity of that, of that time when, when Eli, who has been called to as a representative uh, minister before God hasn't even shared those truths with, with Samuel. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. Uh, verse 8, the, the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. First we see that those who are set apart listen. From the, from the passages of Scripture that we're going to be examining together uh, this morning, we'll be observing three specific things that we can do if we want to live lives set apart for God. Uh, not one of them is easy, but every one is, is necessary for us to truly honor God with our lives. Uh, the first is to, to live as one set apart for God. We have to listen to Him. So raise your hand this morning if you have a listening problem. A listening problem, okay? A couple of you. The rest of you that didn't raise your hand, I assume, didn't hear my question to begin with. Did you see what I did there? Man. Uh, the problem is that a lot of us, a lot of us struggle with listening. Um, in Chuck Swindoll's book, uh, Stress Fractures, he speaks of a time in his life uh, when he found himself with too many commitments uh, in too few days. Uh, he got nervous and tense about it. He was snapping at his wife and children, choking down food at mealtimes, and, and feeling irritated by those uh, unexpected interruptions throughout the day. Does it sound familiar to anyone you know? Um, I think maybe it kind of sounds like me at times. Uh, before long, things around his home started reflecting the pattern of this hurry-up lifestyle. Uh, it was becoming unbearable. And, and during that tense time, uh, shortly after supper one evening, uh, his youngest daughter, Colleen, wanted to tell her dad something important that happened to her at school that day. Uh, she began hurriedly, Daddy, I, I want to tell you something. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you really fast. Suddenly, realizing her frustration, uh, Chuck answered, Honey, you can, you can tell me, and, and you don't have to tell me really fast. Say it, say it slowly. Her reply left him speechless. Then listen slowly I I have a listening problem um, Jennifer will tell me uh, you know what her and the kids are doing you know as their schedule of the week you know things going on um, all that um, you know appointments activities things of that nature I will inevitably you know never fails make plans you know double book whatever you know uh, things like that I wasn't listening I wasn't listening I I'm also horrible with remembering names not because I'm forgetful, but because I, because I don't listen. I don't take time to let the words sink in. I'm too busy thinking about the, the next five things I have to do, or maybe what I'm going to eat for dinner that night, or my plans for the, for the weekend. Really stop, to really slow down, really take the time to listen. And if, if my listening habits, if our listening habits are, are this bad and various areas of our lives, then, then why should we expect our capacity uh, to listen be any better when it comes to listening to the God of the universe? So often we see him in Scripture communicating to people in the way he does here with Samuel. He calls to Samuel with a, with a simple voice. He doesn't step in and rip the clouds apart and with a billowing voice, he... He talks to him gently. We see uh, elsewhere uh, him revealing himself to uh, the prophet Elijah in a, in a similar way with a gentle whisper in 1 Kings chapter 19. These individuals, Samuel, Elijah, and, and others that we find in Scripture, uh, were not listening at these particular moments in time. Uh, they would have missed God's voice entirely. Makes us wonder how... How often, how many times 
have we missed God's voice because of the chaos and the noise all around us? How often, how often have we done that? It takes time to listen. It takes intentionality. But in the grand scheme of things, that what is, what is time? What is energy? What are resources we, we consider that as individuals we have been set apart for God? All of our time, all of our time belongs to, to Him. All of our attention should be His. Uh, if we view our lives in this way, our, our priorities, I think, begin to change. Uh, we begin to set aside specific time during our days to, to do nothing but listen to Him and wait for His voice. We, we long to hear from Him. And when we do, whether it's audibly as it was for Samuel or whether it's through the voice of another person or whether it's in, in something that we observe as we go about our days or whether it's through the reading of his word when we've opened our hearts and our minds and our ears to receive it we we rejoice and we're reminded all the more that we've been set apart for his service and for his purpose so let's continue on in the scripture this morning beginning with verse 9 let's see what happens next therefore Eli said to Samuel go lie down and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling at us, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Those who are set apart respond. Samuel was faced with a choice once Eli told him that it was the Lord that was calling him. He could either, he could choose to either respond or he could choose to ignore the voice of the Lord. You see, it's, it's not enough to simply listen for God's voice. We must respond. If we don't, we, we've listened really in vain, I think. It's, it's easy to... Uh, to think at this point, of course, that uh, obviously Samuel should respond to God's voice. Isn't that just the next step in the listening process? Um, but, you know, honestly, I think even from personal experience that I, I've spent a lot of time listening to God over the years and in, in lessons, uh, in sermons, and in the reading of his word. But how many times have I, how many times have we failed to respond back to him and acknowledge that we've received the message loud and clear? Instead, too often, we say our amens, we shake the pastor's hand on the way out the door, and we go on and we continue to live our lives on our own terms without ever truly responding to God's voice, even though, even though we've heard it clearly and even though we recognize it as such. The proper response, I think, makes all the difference. I'm sure we can all reflect on a time in our lives when when, when the correct response was crucial in a situation. Uh, for, for example, maybe someone just shared with us uh, something that they've never shared with anyone before in their entire lives. Uh, maybe a secret long kept, maybe a, maybe a hope, maybe a dream, maybe even a tragic story of abuse. Maybe it was someone telling you for the very first time that they loved you, or maybe it was the last conversation you ever had with a friend or relative on this side of heaven before they passed on from this life. And we knew that every word, every response, every second in that conversation was extremely valuable and precious. In those situations, in those moments, our response makes all the difference. So with all those examples fresh in our minds, it's important for us to consider that even in, in light of all these critical situations, they, they pale in comparison to the importance of a response to God when he calls us. The question is, how do we respond to him? Sam's response is, is, is perfect and should stand as a model for us all. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel acknowledges that he's but a servant of the Lord, implying that he exists to do all that God desires of him. 
uh, for God is his master and his Lord. And if we desire to live our lives set apart for God, our response will, will simply and hopefully echo that of Samuel's and that we will affirm that we are God's servants. So the fir- third and final uh, chunk of wisdom that we can glean from these verses this morning is that not only did Samuel listen to God and not only did he respond willingly to him, acknowledging the reality that uh, he was but a servant of God, but he took the message that God had given him and he acted in obedience. So let's pick up here in verse 11. Let's see what takes place next. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I'm going to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. Obviously. But Eli called to Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, here I am. Notice the pattern there once again. Uh, Samuel is respecting, in this case, Eli and his, and his response. Eli said, verse 17, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Finally, we see that those who are set apart obey and God is with them. God did not give Samuel an easy message here. Not at all. The, the reality is that with these verses of, of prophecy and punishment for Eli's family uh, lies the underlying message of, of what Samuel's role will be in the future. Uh, as he was called to act both as prophet and priest uh, for the nation Uh, of Israel during some of the most turbulent and yet crucial times in Israel's history, Uh, anointing both Saul and then David as king uh, over Israel. Uh, So those who listen and those who respond to God's voice will always be called to act in obedience for his kingdom. And this is the beauty of being set apart because it means that we're called to play an active role in God's plan for humanity. We have a responsibility, a crucial responsibility in that. Now, Samuel could have shirked his responsibility here, obviously. He could have said, thanks, but no thanks, God. Your, your plan uh, for my life just seems too hard, too dangerous, too time-consuming. He could have responded the way Jonah did the first time, right? As Pastor Lyle shared with us uh, during the most recent series, running in the opposite direction instead of running towards God. He could have said, I I don't want to have to tell people hard things. I I certainly don't want to risk my own neck, for goodness sakes. But he didn't do any of those things. Instead, he obeyed God's commands as God was with him. The remaining verses in this chapter paint a very clear picture then of what that looked like. And so we'll look briefly here at verses 19 through 21 and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground and all Israel from from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord and the Lord appeared again at Shiloh for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord so what does that what does that mean for us today As followers of Christ, we have been set apart, as Paul states in the very familiar words of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. If we are 
obedient. He surely goes with us and gives us strength for the task at hand and for the days ahead. We can only know the way he desires us to be obedient in his ultimate plan for our lives when we are listening and when we're responding to him. Uh, for his plan looks slightly different for each one of us based on the specific talents, specific abilities that he has given us. So it's a journey and it's an adventure that he has called us to. Uh, none of us, not a single one of us, is too young or too old or too smart or too simple or too weak or too strong-willed or too serious or too silly to find out what he has in store for us. So I want to close by reflecting on one final example that we can rely on to guide us as we seek to live lives set apart for service to God. Samuel's example is surely a good one. It's worthy of being held in high regard, but there is one even better in Scripture of such a life. Uh, we're told in Psalm 4, verse, verse 3, that, uh, but know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. And in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26, it speaks of a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Finally, Jesus, whom these passages of Scripture clearly referring to, speaks of himself in John chapter 10, verse 36, as him who the Father consecrated and sent into the world. Jesus, who is the perfect and blameless sacrifice for each and every one of us. It is he that is our perfect example of what it looks like to live life set apart for God. Jesus, who was the perfect and blameless sac sacrifice for us on the cross for our sins through his tragic death, uh, but proving through his resurrection that he was exactly who he said he was. It's what it means to live a life set apart for God. He listened to God, he responded to God, he obeyed God, and God was with him as he lived out his life in total surrender as a servant on this earth. And in the same way, we know that as believers, he goes with us and he fills us with his presence, with his peace, and with his love as we live lives set apart for him. So let's stand together in closing this morning. We know what he's called us to do. Now is where we take action. So let's pray for that. Let's pray together in closing this morning. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you for your words to us this morning, for this powerful reminder, God, that uh, for each and every one of us, that you have saved, that you have called for a purpose. You, you desire us to lay down our lives for you. Because we are set apart for you. And that is, that's the plan. That's the mission. You, you don't have any other hands and feet here on this, on this earth except for ours. So God, I, I pray for each one of us. God, as we, as we continue to reflect on these truths, as we, as we wrestle through them this week, God, we know every day, God, whether it's at school, whether it's at work, whether it's our neighborhoods, our homes, our families, you're, you're putting people in our path that uh, you desire us to, to have, a, have that impact on, to, to shine your light clearly and to, to testify to who you are and what you've done for us. So, God, as you go with us in these days ahead, have your way. Move in ways that only you can. And, God, we just thank you for the incredible ripple effect that that's going to have across our families, workplaces, schools, community, and world. We pray these things this morning in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, respond, obey. He is surely with those who are bold enough to live lives set apart for him. So be blessed and go in peace this morning and this week ahead as you live life set apart. You're dismissed.